Hello and what is up YouTube? My name is G3 Iron and welcome to today's discussion where we're going to take a look at the defensive layering mechanic called spell suppression and we're going to do a deep dive into why this is such a great defensive layer as a mechanic offered to players in Path of Exile. One of the reasons why I wanted to dive into this particular level of a deep discussion myself on spell suppression is because I've seen lots and lots of wonderful other hosts and discussions on the topic of spell suppression and of course what it is as a mechanic. I've seen lots of people discussing the mechanic itself, but not a lot of other people explaining why spell suppression is just so dang good in Path of Exile. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to do a deep dive into why spell suppression is so good and do some comparative numbers using a whole bunch of different resources, including some database numbers on specters and monsters, including looking at top end bosses and the various ways they can try and kill you in the game and whether or not spell suppression can help you, as well as doing a generalized concept of just how prevalent spell damage is throughout Path of Exile. Let's start the discussion today by addressing what exactly is spell suppression. Spell suppression is a defensive mechanic that when active against a spell provides a chance to reduce a percentage of damage from that spell. The default amount of percentage damage reduced by spell suppression is 50%. So you can simply think of spell suppression as a binary situation where you either have it or you don't when it's being applied to a spell. If a spell is suppressed, check mark yes or insert one. If the answer is yes, then that spell is now going to do 50% of whatever damage it was scheduled to do to your character. Every character initially starts out with 0% chance to suppress spell damage. So this means that as you acquire passive points and as you acquire gear, you are trying to fill out your percentage chance to suppress spell damage because you can, unlike many other things in Path of Exile, you can actually reach 100% cap chance to suppress spell damage. That's a pretty rare thing in Path of Exile to be able to scale something up to a full 100%. There's a lot of things in Path of Exile that you can scale up with diminished returns like armor. There's other things that you can scale up to a flat cap like elemental resistances, but spell suppression, you can just get up to 100%, meaning that every single spell that is ever scheduled to deal damage to you will deal half of that damage. Let's move from a definition of what spell suppression is to talking about who thinks this particular defensive layer of a mechanic is good with inside the Path of Exile community. There's a couple of groups of players who really enjoy and are enthusiastic about taking advantage of spell suppression in their builds. One of them is, of course, hardcore players, players who do not like to rip. And of course, Zizran is a fantastic example of this. If you go and you watch his video that's linked down below in the video description, his most recent build guide on the impending doom occultist takes advantage advantage of spell suppression and does indeed cap out at 100% spell suppression, meaning that for his particular character with the POB and the itemization that he's got set up, whenever they are hit by a spell is going to take 50% of that damage. This isn't just something that's popular for Zizoran as one particular popular player. This is pretty largely popular across the board in hardcore. At least 27% of the latter in hardcore Sanctum League are using our buddy Magebane, which Magebane gives the following stat as a particular keystone. Dexterity provides no inherent bonus to evasion rating, 1% chance to suppress spell damage per 15 dexterity. We will talk more about Mage Bane in a little bit, but this is just one way to gauge just how popular spell suppression is among the ladder player base. At least 27% of the hardcore ladder players who are pushing for experience and who want their characters to survive are getting Mage Bane, and at least 16% of the softcore ladder are also taking Mage Bane. Now, this isn't a perfect representative of all of the players throughout all of Path of Exile who are taking advantage of and using spell suppression as a defensive mechanic. These numbers have only been taken from the ladder, and so they're only representative of a relatively small portion of the player base, but they are nonetheless representative of what players who are pushing for experience and who are pushing top end content, what they think is strong and what they think is useful for their characters. Because this particular search only included a search for Mage Bane, this is actually only including a percentage of players who needed to use Mage Bane to cap out their spell suppression chance. It's possible for you to get max spell suppression chance 100% without even using Mage Bane. It's not a required keystone. That means that these numbers that we are looking at, 27% in hardcore and 16% in softcore, are actually the minimum amount of popular numbers of players taking advantage of and using spell suppression. These are not 
indicative of what could be much actually a larger portion of the player base than these particular percentages. So all of those disclaimers and all of these examples combine to say a lot of people think spell suppression is really good, both in hardcore and in softcore. All these players think that spell suppression is good. They're utilizing it in their builds. Why? What is it that is so key about spell suppression that makes it such an effective defensive component that you'd want to spend passive points to acquire it and cap it out at 100%? Well, first off, the number of deadly spells in the game. We're going to get into this throughout our discussion today where we break down different spells, but the number of deadly spells inside Path of Exile is ridiculously high. In terms of the common damage sources in Path of Exile, spells are actually very, very common, and we'll get into the details of just how common they are based off of some of the data that we've got access to through researching specters, but Suffice it to say for right now, there's a ton of spells in Path of Exile, and they can really hurt you. So simply cutting them in half is very, very helpful for your character's long-term survivability. A second reason why spell suppression is so good is because it's available. You can get spell suppression via gear and from the passive tree, making a 100% chance to suppress possible. If spell suppression was, let's say, capped at 75%, or let's say it was simply very, very rare, and it was only attached to one or two uniques, and maybe one or two masteries on the tree, making it very either difficult or very undesirable, because you're never quite sure when it's going to kick in, then it might not be such a good mechanic. But because the mechanic can be scaled up with relative ease to 100% chance to suppress spell damage, this means that this is a reliable reliable, cheap, and effective way to mitigate damage that is otherwise potentially going to one-shot your character. A third reason why spell suppression is so good is because of its base value. The default flat percentage of damage mitigated is 50%. There is almost nothing else in Path of Exile that can even come close to this. In fact, anything that can come close to this, like let's say glancing blows, requires a great amount of investment to really make it work. And even with something as awesome as glancing blows, it's not guaranteed to happen for every single attack. You still have to roll your block chance, and there's still a chance that that particular attack won't be blocked, and therefore the damage won't be mitigated. With spell suppression, you can scale it up to 100%, meaning every single spell that hits you is by default, which you can scale it up from here, but at minimum, is going to be cut in half. That's a really, really strong defensive layer. I'm sure some of you are going to point out down below in the comments that there's some other defensive mechanic that I'm not thinking of here today that can cut damage in half, but this is huge. I welcome you to drop me that comment down below and let me know what defensive layer I'm missing that can cut damage in half like this. It's fantastic. And I think the word to be used here is, is potentially even unprecedented. This is a huge defensive layer that is otherwise generally booted out of the game. So here's hoping it doesn't get nerfed. <laughs> a fourth reason why spell suppression is so good is because of the consequence of all of these others. Ultimately, spell suppression helps keep your character alive, meaning in softcore, you are able to stack up that experience and continue to progress towards your next passive point. And in hardcore, it means that you're not losing items and you're not losing progress entirely on a character being sent over to Standard League. I'm almost to the point of saying, like, get your elemental resistances up and then get spell suppression. Like, it, it's almost hand in hand that close to each other. It's not quite there yet in my own mind, but as time goes on, I've actually been growing in that. At first, when I took a look at spell suppression, I first thought, and eh, that'd be kind of nice if you can fit it into your build somewhere. And now it's growing in my mind to go, nope, aside from elemental resistances and a little bit of physical mitigation, spell suppression is potentially either the first or second layer of defense that I'm going to want and that I'm going to recommend outside of elemental resistance capped. At this point, you might be asking, why iron? Are there really that many number of spells in the game that can deal damage to you? And so is spell suppression really that effective as you're mapping or as you're bossing? Let's answer that. Let's talk about your second favorite balding bearded character in Path of Exile, and that's of course the Shaper, who takes second only to the Templar himself. Yes, the Shaper has got a ton of spells, 
His beam is a spell. His balls are spells. His bullet hell form are spells. And the vortex that he drops on the ground is, yes, indeed a spell. So when you're taking on top end content, like let's say the Shaper, and he's got a ton of abilities that are well known to be able to absolutely destroy your character if you keep tanking hits, if you have the ability to extend your life pool or potentially double your life pool by reducing 50% or more if you spec into it, damage that's coming your way from the Shaper's spells, that's really strong for a lot of players out there who have never been able to take down the Shaper or who have always struggled and maybe have had to use multiple portals in order to take down Shaper. Spell mitigation could actually be something that saves you, whether that's from a random bullet getting you while you're standing outside of Zana's bubble, or if that's the beam cannon going off in your face and you weren't fast enough to react. Spell suppression can give you that little bit extra time, that little bit of extra survivability against big hitting spells. Our examples don't end with the Shaper, though. That's right, a bunch of his other endgame friends also show up as having spells, such as the Elder, such as Breach Lords, such as the various endgame horrors, and of course the Maven. And there's even more that could be included in this list. This is not an exhaustive list here. If I was to make an exhaustive list of all of the endgame bosses that deal spell damage, then I would be exhausted and you would be exhausted because it would be exhaustive and it would just name basically every single endgame style boss that Path of Exile has. There are some exceptions here or there with particular guardians or with particular map bosses. Some of those are more focused on attacks, but when it comes to the actual pinnacle bosses themselves, many of them, up to half or even all of their abilities are actually spells. Meaning that if you've got a 100% chance to spell suppress, you will be taking 50% of the intended damage that was headed your way from these pinnacle bosses spells. It's not just pinnacle bosses that cast spells though in Path of Exile. While you're mapping or even while you're leveling, there are plenty of monsters that have abilities that have the spell tag, meaning they are eligible for spell suppression. Take for instance our buddy the Stygian Revenant who shows up in the uh, Belly of the Beast level one and two, as well as in the Harvest. Now, this little bad boy, he does an estimated spell DPS, according to the Spectre spreadsheet that is, again, linked down below in the video description, an estimated 1,700 lightning spell damage. Even in Act 4, that's a lot of damage, and I'm sure there are some of you out there, although maybe none of you will be brave enough to admit it in the comments, who have actually died to this thing while you are progressing through the 10x story campaign. This guy has been so powerful throughout the history of Path of Exile that all the way back in 2.0, there was this following change made to him. Stygian Revenants now fire three lightning projectiles down from five and deal 30% less damage with them. Their revived minions now explode for 20% less damage. These monsters were extremely efficient at killing players. This purpose of this change is to prevent mass extinction of exiles rather than to nerf them as specters. In Act 4, you might not have capped resistances. If you don't have capped lightning resistance and you're unlucky enough to have a Stygian Revenant right next to you and he decides to make something explode right on top of you, well, you might be having a bad time. But if you've put some serious points into spell suppression or you've got some spell suppression on your gear, then by this time, you might have a character that's still running and progressing towards piety and towards the various guardians of Malachi, or you might be on your way back to Highgate or all the way back in standard if you're playing hardcore. An even earlier example than Act 4 is in Act 2 with the Lyra's Martyrs, those crazy purple monsters that run up to you and explode themselves on top of you. Imagine if you were a bad enough player to actually rip in ruthless hardcore to these characters. Yes, I've done it. That's what you're watching. So Alira's Martyrs have a particular ability called the Bandit Suicide Explosion, and its damage in Act 2 is actually higher than the Stygian Revenant's damage in Act 4. Again, some pretty scary spells, some pretty scary abilities that can show up even throughout the 10 act story campaign. Thankfully, though, they're spells, which means if you cap out your spell suppression, you're going to take half damage from them. Now, I've made the argument today that content has spells, both at the very top end in terms of pinnacle bosses and endgame bosses, but also throughout your gameplay of the 10 act story campaign. Exactly what percentages of abilities in Path of Exile actually do attacks or are tagged as attacks versus how many are tagged as spells. Well, the closest that we get to an estimation with this is through using information that we've got about specters and then trying to figure out 
basically which of their abilities are labeled as attacks and which of their abilities are labeled as spells. So evaluating the Spectre data sheet that we've got, this is just based off of Spectrable monsters and Spectrable minions. So this does not include some versions of endgame bosses, which are not Spectrable, which again means the numbers here are going to be a bit inconsistent. We're not going to have a precise number that we can definitively say, hey, 65% of Path of Exile is attacks and 25 to 35% are spells. And then there's five to 10% that are just tagged with nothing. We don't have that level of accuracy at the moment. At least I don't. Again, if you've got that level of accuracy and want to share it down below in the comments, I welcome you to do so. What we do have though is some generalized figures. And thanks to the Spectre spreadsheet, which we were able to take a look at, you can see that in terms of spells, there's about a thousand or so abilities that have the spell tag. Now, if these are duplicates or if there are duplicates, we can still say, even if half of them are duplicates, that there's between 500 to 1,000 different abilities that monsters are going to use labeled as spells. We can apply the same sort of logic and reasoning to attacks, which is that in total in the Spectre spreadsheet, there's about 870 plus uh, various abilities that are labeled with attacks. So if you cut those in half, you've got somewhere between 400 to roughly 870 abilities that are labeled with attacks. Prior to doing this research, and this was one of the reasons why I wanted to go so in depth in this, I didn't think that there was any way that there were more spells in Path of Exile than there were attacks. I thought for sure at least the most frequent sort of abilities that monsters would have would actually be labeled attacks. And maybe it's true. Maybe the frequency of attacks that come through or the frequency of abilities that are used are actually more often attacks than they are spells. But nonetheless, in terms of the diversity of content, at least among Spectrable minions and the info that we've got at the moment, it seems to be that there's a roughly equal or slightly tilted towards spells waiting of abilities that can hit you in Path of Exile. So what does this have to do with spell suppression? It means that roughly half of the stuff out there, or maybe even a little bit more than half of the stuff that's trying to kill your character is spells. And that means that for roughly half of that stuff or so, again, I'm not trying to be too definitive or too defined in that 50% half, but right around half or so of the things that are trying to kill you in Path of Exile in terms of monster abilities are indeed spells. So imagine if we could say, spell suppression, which reduces damage by default by 50%, works for about half of the stuff that's trying to kill you. That's really, really good. You're not able to say that about, let's say, lightning damage or fire damage or cold damage or chaos damage. Each of those particular types of damage is actually much more rare than, let's say, half of the game. And this, in my mind, is one of the reasons why spell suppression is such a strong defensive layer. Yes, you're going to bump into multiple different monsters in every single act and in every single map that's going to do a wide variety of abilities that are going to be a mixture of physical and fire and cold and lightning and chaos damage. But you're also going to bump into a whole bunch of monsters that are dealing some combination of attacks and spells. And for those that are casting spells, if you're at 100% spell suppression cap, they're automatically as a baseline without any other improvements once you're at 100% spell chance uh, to suppress, they're going to be doing half of the intended damage of their spells to you. That's a really strong defensive layer. Because content in Path of Exile has spells, spell suppression is therefore good. Think of spell suppression like the great one-shot protector. If a spell is scheduled to deal damage to your character, and if you have spell suppression at 100% chance, this means for a spell to truly one-shot you, it would have to kill your character when it's dealing only 50% of its scheduled damage. Let's say you've got 1,000 health in our example. You are scheduled to take an elemental hit that's going to deal 5,000 damage. That sounds like a lot. Since you're at 75% resistance, you are now scheduled to take 1250 elemental damage because you've prevented 75% of that damage, which would be 3750. Because you have 100% chance to suppress this spell, instead of taking 1250 damage, which would kill your character, you've only got 1,000 life, you cut that damage in half and now instead only take 625 damage to your actual hit pool, assuming there's no other negating factors and no other differences or changes to this particular example. In this example, without spell suppression, you would have been one shot. Because of spell suppression, you instead have 375 life and a cool new story to brag about.
So how do we get spell suppression? Maybe at this point in time, you're going, wow, spell suppression sounds like a pretty decent layer of defense. I'd like to keep my experience in softcore and I'd like to keep my character alive in hardcore. How do I get some of that sweet, sweet spell suppression? The answer is of course, passives and gear. There's plenty of different gear slots that can roll spell suppression nowadays. I'm not going to go over an exhaustive list of the various item bases and item types that can roll spell suppression, but simply be encouraged that you can get it on various pieces of gear. In addition to various pieces of gear, there are some places on the passive tree that currently in 320 are high value targets for acquiring high percent chance to suppress enemy spells. The single highest of these valued wheels is the inveterate wheel coming in right around the middle of your screen with 39% value to that entire wheel added for chance to suppress spell damage. The second highest spot on the tree to increase your chance to suppress uh, spell damage is going to be in the reflexes wheel, which is opposite the life uh, wheel on the near the scion starting location. You can think of it this way. If you're constantly playing a character that's on the left side of the tree and you want to make your way down towards the scion to pick up some extra life nodes, well, if you're on the right-hand side of the tree or on the bottom side of the tree, you can make your way towards this particular reflexes wheel and pick up 34% to your spell suppression chance. The entrench wheel is down towards the bottom right portion of the tree, and that gives you 27%. And then up at the very top of the tree, you can get 22% with instinct. Lastly, you can pick up 24% chance to suppress damage when you pick up intuition and quick step, as well as the small passives that are on either side. Any three of these particular wheels or combinations of these wheels is already putting you at a healthy 60 plus percent to spell chance suppress. And then you can either fill it out either with gear or again, continuing to put passives into it. Or you can go over and grab the keystone, which is Mage Bane. That's what we took a look at earlier. And we saw that 27% of hardcore players on the ladder were using it. And at least 16% of the softcore ladder was using it. It simply reads dexterity provides no inherent bonus to evasion. 1% chance to suppress spell damage per 15 dexterity. If you just want to use Mage Bane itself as a way to cap your spell suppression chance, then you're going to need 1500 dexterity in order to have a 100% chance to spell suppress. But you can also use Mage Bane as a simply nice way of rounding out whatever the difference is between your other passives and your gear and the stats that you're naturally picking up on your attributes with dexterity. Well, thanks so much for joining us for today's discussion. I look forward to reading all of your comments down below, all of the corrections, all of the errors that I've made, all of the suggestions that you have, all of the tricks that you've got related to spell suppression. Feel free to share them down below with the rest of the community. I've got a couple of questions for you today. First off, do you use spell suppression? For whatever reason, I simply haven't used it very often. And now that it's available to me and I understand a little bit more about the prevalence of spells and the sheer number of monsters that deal spell-based uh, damage to me in Path of Exile, I am going to much more highly value spell suppression moving forward. I'd love to know why you do use spell suppression or why haven't you used spell suppression in the past? I think for me, it's partly because as a veteran player, spell suppression came in as a sort of replacement for dodge. And to me, it was a little bit confusing in terms of its effectiveness versus what we used to do as especially magic find characters that I used to play on the bottom right hand side of the tree. You'd simply go over, you grab acro, you grab phase acro, and eventually your character was going to die several times, but that was okay. I was just farming maps and playing softcore and, and using increased item quantity and, and just happy as a lark could be, you know, re recognizing that I was going to die uh, basically, you know, every couple of maps. But looking at spell suppression and seeing how strong it is as a mitigator for for a large chunk of abilities in Path of Exile, I think I'm going to use it moving forward. And I think by doing a deep dive into it, it's helped expose me to just how helpful it can be in a wide variety of settings, whether in mapping settings or in bossing settings. Last question for you today is, do you enjoy this level of in-depth discussion on mechanics? I know we've sort of nerded out here today. We've taken a look at some spreadsheets. We've referenced some different builds. We've taken a look at the ladder. We've kind of used all of the different uh, tools available to us, and including PoE Wiki, as well as even simple definitions of abilities and in-game mechanics. So I'd love to know if this is the sort of discussion that you're enjoying having around here. I'd love to hear that below in the comments to let us know that we should do more of these sorts of discussions in the future. Thanks once again for joining us today. And I hope today is the day a Mirror of Calandra drops for you. Thanks for watching that video. If you'd like more information on any of our discussion points today, you can see them down below in the video description. If you'd also like to join our Discord or support our Patreon, you can do so with the links down below. Thanks again, a big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters.